So this is a core conversation about funding Drupal Core. Um, and we have not too many slides, a few things to say, and then we will have discussion. So I also, okay. Um, uh, so what I need is I need two, crap, I forgot to do that. I need somebody to make a, a, a Google Doc and take notes. So that would, Nod really wants to do that. Wim really wants to, thank you. Uh, if you want to, you can uh, make it commentable or editable by everybody and tweet out a link to it uh, with the DrupalCon hashtag. That's okay with me. Uh, especially what I want to make sure is that when people are doing the discussion part and I'm listening to them, that I can really listen to them and I don't have to try and also remember what they're saying. So, Wim, that's your important part. So he needs a power cord. It's not good enough. Don't you dare. Don't. Okay, so anyway, uh, so this is a core conversation. Uh, we're going to have discussion. Um, and we're going to talk about funding Drupal Core. So if that's not what you're here for, you can go pick another session. It's OK to leave. Uh, I'm really glad, though, that we have people who are interested in this topic. Um, so we thought about who would come to a conversation like this. And we thought it would be a bunch of different kinds of people. Uh, people who want to get paid for contributing to Core might come to this talk. Uh, people who have already thought a lot about the Core um, developing core funding problem in general. So maybe they've thought about it for a few years or they're interested in the topic and they wanted to see like if there was anything new. Um, so we thought they might come. Uh, we thought people might want to come just to hear like either what Alex was talking about or what I was talking about. And they really didn't care what we were talking about. They just wanted to come and hear us talk. So that's cool too. Um, and we thought uh, there might also be people here who are already uh, have already made the decision to direct part of their money to funding core. Uh, so they might be a shop, or agency, an individual, or an organization, and they are already doing what they are thinking of in their head as funding core development. They might also come to a talk like this. Um, so I'm Kathy Thays. I'm YesCT on Drupal.org and also on Twitter. Um, I review and work on issues in Drupal Core. I really like to work on multilingual issues. I also do uh, mentoring, so I do some IRC mentoring. I do sprint planning. Um, so you should all come on Friday to the big sprint, please. Uh, and there's extended sprints on Saturday and Sunday at this really cool place, which is the Berlage. And it has really good internet, and the, it's like in a castle. It's really great. Um, and I also mentor, so I, I help other mentors become mentors and help pull that off on Friday. So that's my involvement in CORE and Drupal. Okay, <laughs> my name's Alex Pot. I'm um, Alex Pot on Twitter, and uh, I'm a Drupal 8 CORE committer, and I'm responsible for um, also the Drupal 8 configuration management initiative now. Um, oh, I forgot to tell my story. Yeah. You tell your story. I'll now. tell my story first. So we were going to tell our stories and about how we've had direct experience for um, of funding Drupal Core. So when I started to get involved in Drupal 8 development, I was basically um, being paid by Capgemini. It was my job. I was working on major Drupal sites. And I was um, had, had that itch of, like, I don't ever want to use features to, to do this work again and I want to get involved in Drupal 8 and make sure that no one has to share my pain. <coughs> and Capgemini were, were, were generally supportive of me to do that in terms of they paid for me to go to DrupalCons um, and they, they didn't, you know, they, they allowed me to get involved in the, the queues and they, they didn't really give me time but there was a certain amount of money available um, and uh, to, go, to go to events and, and, and take part. Um, then my circumstances changed, and I decided that I wanted to spend more time on core and no time um, 
working for Capgemini. And I, and I was at in a very fortunate p position because Capgemini paid me okay to, and I don't spend all my money all the time, to say, okay, I can fund myself to work on core. So I <coughs> quit my job, and then someone told Dries, and Dries was like, hey, <laughs> there's someone who's going to spend all their time working on core. Maybe they also want to be a committer. Um, and that was fun <laughs> to, to, be, to be asked to, to do that. And I was like, yeah, I'll do that. And I was, at the time, I was thinking, maybe I'll do 10 hours a week um, committing and then 10 hours a week on CMI. Um, it became really obvious, like, after uh, start, starting my role as a committer, that the needs for Drupal 8 in, in terms of, like, the, the, the work, the, the RWCQ was, like, I think five pages at the time. Like, just keeping the churn going through on that required more than my 10 hours that I had kind of thought that I might do on it. So I said, like, okay, that's what I'm going to do. And <laughs> I dropped the CMI thing for a while, which is why the CMI initiative had no, no uh, momentum for, like, some of, some of last year. And I was spending my own money. My savings were running out. And I was like, okay, I need to solve this. And... I, I basically just said that to the community, and and Jess encouraged me to open up a Git tip account, and I was like, all right, well, why not? And I opened it up, and it started. It was like one dollar, seven dollars, and then suddenly it changed, and and I was like getting um, fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty, five hundred dollars a week, and so five hundred dollars a week, um, no, five hundred dollars a month was was not really enough for me to live on, but that was like where it, where it got to at its, at its kind of um, maximum. Um, <coughs> and, and then that wasn't enough money. Uh, so I kept on like kind of trying to raise awareness. And uh, a large Drupal user approached me and said, hey, you know what, we want to um, help you uh, release Drupal 8 because we're building our whole uh, ecosystem, a hundred of sites on Drupal 7, and we're not doing this for the next two years, we're doing this for the next ten years, and we want Drupal to survive, so we want to fund you. But hey, um, the only condition of that funding is that you can't say who we are because this isn't compatible, like just giving money to an individual is difficult for us for our accounting systems and everything. Um, and they could also only commit to like a very short term. They, they, the way it was set up was like, okay, we'll pay you month on month, and each month I had to ask for more money. And that's kind of stressful living. <coughs> so eventually I decided I didn't want to live like that anymore, and that I asked the Drupal community, hey, does anyone have a job for me? Um, and specifically, I'd like to work on core. And I got some really great offers for, from loads of great Drupal shops, but Chapter 3 came in with like the best offer of like, hey, we just want you to deliver Drupal 8 beta because they have the same concerns. They're like, we're delivering great Drupal 7 sites now. We've got our immediate future is, is looking good, but we, we want Drupal 8 out. You know? And in order for that to happen, we have to invest in it. And this is, this is, for them, it felt like an easy investment to make. And so that's why I'm sitting here today, not worrying about how I'm going to get paid next month. <coughs> Happy, sorry. Yeah. So, um, so when I got started doing Drupal, I volunteered to build websites for organizations that I was volunteering for that didn't have them. And so I did that for a few years, and then I got to be decently good at it, and um, I wanted to spend more time doing it, and I also wanted some money, so I freelanced for a, a, a summer or a year or so. And I didn't like it. Uh, you had to keep finding the next job, and there was a lot of administration involved and invoicing. and uh, So I didn't really want to do that. But at the same time that year when I was doing that, I was also becoming much more involved with uh, mentoring and working on core issues. And when I had free time, I would spend them working on core issues because they were so much fun. I really liked it. And... Uh, any event I could go to, I was applying for scholarships at any event and hoping that they would bring me there to help with mentoring or anything. And many, many places, many events did, and it was great. Um, but I, when the next summer came around and I was able to attempt to work full-time again, 
I didn't want to get a, a job uh, doing freelancing. I also didn't want to get a job uh, at a Drupal shop because at that point I could only commit to working full time during the summer months. And who's going to hire you to just work full time during the summer months and then not work for them the rest of the year? Not very many people. And I knew that if I had gotten a job at a Drupal shop, um, they would probably, my, my optimistic expectation was that it might be 40 hours a week and I might be lucky and get um, like a 20% uh, contribution time. So I might get eight hours of contribution time. But I would have to be committing to 40 hours a week and I didn't really know if I had that much time, and I s knew I didn't have that much time during the rest of the year. And, and so I was like, I asked a few companies to hire me, and they said no. Uh, they wouldn't hire me just to work on core, um, but they would hire me to like do client work. And I was like, oh, well, that means I'd have to give up working on core. So I had to pick between getting a job doing client work or, and not doing any core work at all because it just didn't fit into my life. Or I could try and get a job working on core. And so I stuck with that, and I asked, uh, I just asked a bunch of people, and Compress uh, paid me for many months, and then um, Cheppers paid me from Hungary, and uh, Breakthrough Technology in Chicago, and those were small, um, short, they were shorter term things. They were like, well, we can pay you, you know, for a while, and we can pay you for 15 hours a week. But I was ecstatic. Uh, and then I was at Nice Camp, and I gave a, a talk, and uh, Dan from Black Mesh came up and talked to me, and he said, I think you're going to want to talk to me. And I said, yes, thank God. Um, and so he showed me this uh, job posting for Drupal Community Liaison, and I read it, and I was like, that's me. I want that job. That's my job. The job is to go to Drupal events and do what I do at Drupal events so I can plan sprints, I can go to sprints, I can sit in the hallway and talk to people and uh, and when I'm not in events and I'm at home I can work on core issues and I, occasionally we have a check-in meeting and there's a blog every now and then. So in between there when before I got hired at Black Mesh I also had a GitTip uh, account and Every now and then, between like the sponsorships that I did have, I would have no sponsorship money coming in at all. And so the only money that I was getting in was like the $70 a week uh, from GitTip. So, so I also did that. So uh, why do we have this core conversation and why this topic? Um, because we feel like we want Drupal 8 to succeed. And we feel like Drupal in general, work on Drupal core, um, needs reliable resources. And that's needed both on the release management side in terms of being able to direct resources to what's really important to be working on right now to make progress happen. And it's also important that um, to have a reliable source uh, on the, the side of the people who are doing the work. So it's, I think it's pretty common. Sometimes people will work on court when they can. And when they can is when they run out of money. And then they have to get the next like gig. And uh, that makes it really hard for them because they have to stop working on court when they'd really rather be doing that. Uh, in order to go find money, because they're never sure uh, if they're going to have enough. Uh, so they have to get a job. And it's also very hard on the people who are trying to plan things and, uh, and focus the work, because they can say, you know, our goal is to have this done in two months, but they don't know what is going to be available those two months, week to week. Uh, are they going to get 20 hours from this person or, or two? Uh, they have no idea. So it's really hard. Um, and having a reliable resources is going to make uh, developing Drupal more sustainable. Also, we have a problem um, with there's there's lots of jobs around um, managing Drupal core that people don't want to do. Issue triage, complex issue um, patch review, which takes days. Um, they aren't they aren't where people have fun. 
people have people have fun innovating the new features, um, and so so we we have we have this problem where where we've got some great ideas that get implemented and then the rest of the system has to be converted, and and, and we struggle to 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 find people to to manage the issue queue so that people know what to work on, and and how to work on it. We've seen that a lot in the in the initiatives. Some of the initiatives have been exceptionally well run. They've had people who've, who've built teams and. And they've, they've managed their issues, and, and people have been working on them one by one by one by one. It's gone, gone great. Other initiatives, they've, they've done the initial conversions, and then it's been difficult to herd all the contributors together to, to actually get the job done, to, to get it finished. We, we, we struggle to, to, to have people who, who, who complete and finish the jobs. And, and one, of those, one of the reasons that is is because it's, it's not that fun. It's it's there's a, there's a drudgery to making sure that every single part of core confirms conforms to the new API, and that means that um, that uh, we have to look at why that is. What why why aren't people just picking up those tasks? And one of the reasons they're not picking up their tasks is because one of the the natural resource that we rely on in in in, in Drupal up to now has been people's goodwill and goodwill to do annoying tasks is like hmm, it's it can it's pretty thankless. So that's that's why why this is important to talk about. The other thing is is that Drupal has changed. It's not the same size. It's huge. No one can know the whole of core anymore. So things things take longer. So they require more resources. So just basing um, uh, the Drupal kind of res re the resource for development based upon like goodwill and the the intrinsic value of just doing good. Um, it's important that we continue to value that, but we have to realize that we've, we've outgrown that model. It's, it, that's not going to solely support Drupal development going forward. And it doesn't now. So if it doesn't now, and, and we have um, things already happening, we have like Git tip, me being paid by chapter three, um, then, we, then, then, we, the, then we have to discuss how we're gonna do it because people are just making up their own minds. So that leads us to our next slide. Which is about the, the current funding strategies that people, people are employing. So if you're, if you're a contributor and you're like, I want to get paid to work on core, what are your options? Um, we've, we've heard from, from Kathy about her, the way that she did it at Compress. She, she, she reached out to individual companies and she was like, hey, give me some money for working on court. And there's a loose contract, um, uh, open-ended contract signed up. There's not a lot of job security for Kathy there. Um, they can end it when they like. And, and it's good because there's, there's new resources coming into court, but it's, it's not that secure and stable. There's also now a trend for like short-term topical contracts that are limited in scope. Um, a great example has been um, Acquia has done a lot of this. To, they've targeted key features of Drupal 8, like CMI, <coughs> and completing the routing system. And they've, they've put their money where their mouth is, and they've they've funded like sort of myself and Sasha to work to, to work to complete stuff, which has been great. Um, another strategy that we're seeing more and more of, um, two examples here again, the companies are now hiring core contributors on stuff, and this is a great thing. Um, at Korea now is built is the the Octo team is, is is exists and it, I think it it's grew big as a right is it like the equivalent of six full time people or right so yeah a lot of people yeah. there's myself working for Chapter Three and there's Kathy employed by Backmesh um, and I, I I heard of a couple of other um, people who are, who are starting to explore that. Um, there's there's the opportunity to try d doing um, consistent crowdsource funding, aka like GitHub Gratty Pay, which worked for you know it almost worked for me. If I didn't live in London, and didn't have a family, it might have worked for for a lot longer. Yeah, um, it's also been pretty good, I think, for Patrick, for Patrick D. He gets a consistent bit coming in from there. Um, we've had people try using uh, kind of Kickstarter-ish techniques. There's the, the Drupal Fundus site, which managed to raise um, thousands of dollars for Drupal 8 rules. It's a big success. Um, 
another way in which people are, are, are kind of paid to work on Drupal Core that we have here at the moment is the percentage of time that they're given by companies. And a number of companies give people 20% time. Um, and <coughs> one of the problems with that is that we really don't know how many people are, are contributing via that, via that method. So it's, it's really hard to know how, how effective or ineffective that's being. Um, the, one of the prime ways that, that co people have contributed to Funding Core is by funding themselves. Um, uh, so they charge more for their work or they, or they value their, their time so that they don't sell all their time to, to, to their company or to the contracts they're working on. Um, Jennifer Hodgson uses the proceeds of her contracting to, to, to do all the fantastic work that she does. Um, and then there are the indirect ways that the core gets funded. There's event sponsorship, there's the DrupalCon scholarships, there's the DA partners which build out the, t the testing infrastructure which core relies on. Um, so yeah, that's what's, that's the kind of current scene. But I think, I think that we have concerns around this scene. I think that... Right, so like for example with scholarships, if you're a core developer and you want to go to an event and spend the week working on core, you don't know whether or not you can go until you hear back from the scholarship. So it's hard for the team to plan whether or not you're going to be there. It's hard for you to plan your life to allow that to happen. Um, and so some of these things are not solving that reliable bit. Well, some are solving the reliable bit. Anyway, the problems. So one of, the, one of the key things is that I, I believe that the community has many different types of concerns about the way that CORE is currently funded. And they come from all sides of the problem. I think that if we look at in Drupal's history, there's <coughs> generally a, a distrust of any centralizing force within the Drupal community. We hear like um, issues around like, well, Acquia wants this for core. But why are they are they pushing it in, or is or or these specific people are individuals pushing their ideas into core, and it, and it, and we value our consensus, um, and we distrust this idea that there might be funds influencing core direction. There's there's also a lot of perceived conflicts of interest between an employer and what, what's best for Drupal. We've seen issues explode over, well, that's what this company wants, and, and individuals feel that they have to defend what the company wants or, <coughs> or, or, or not, and they have to make a choice, an ethical choice. And, and Drupal's, Drupal's uh, as Dries said in his, his keynote, it's a public good. And so we need, we need to start to think about how we allow people to contribute to that public good in ways that allows them to, to, to do it in the best way. And if, 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 they, if they're having a conflict between themselves and their employer and they're being directed to, to put that in, it's, 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 it's hard, it's tough. Um, so um, another concern that um, the community has is um, that paying core developers would perhaps uh, increase the amount that those people produce. And so that would grow in comparison to the amount that um, independent or hobbyist kind of people would be producing. And so maybe dr drown out their opinions. Also, I think people are worried that if you start paying some people, those other people who still want to contribute may not because they're like, why am I not getting paid? Why am I going to do this for free if it's if other people are? So. Um, so there's that concern out there too. Yeah. So basically, what Kathy's getting at there is that there's a concern that the external expected rewards I'm being paid for something, I'm being given this for that, are going to diminish like the intrinsic value that we that we have at the moment, the intrinsic motivation for 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 uh, for contributing to open source, and so so we, we we risk the relationships between ourselves. Like the community, the community is an important thing, and co cohesion is important, and and this this change between the motivations for contributing to core um, risk our cohesion and we, we need to the only way of addressing that now is to talk about it because we already have extrinsic motivations to contribute to core some of us so so it, so it's not we can't shut it down we're not going to we're not going to stop companies from taking the the uh, 
the opinion that they want to invest in core, and it's great, but maybe there needs to be a way that we can ensure that the hobbyists and the voluntary efforts are, are, are valued and we, we allow, we have a way for people to <coughs> have the resources to work on core. Yeah, so another problem with the current um, funding ways that are out there right now is that if you're an individual with money that you would like to donate, it's very hard for you to know where to give it. So if you want to give it to a particular person, you have to know enough to know which person would be a good value to give it to. That's hard for people with money. They're not in internal, like, they don't know everybody. That can be difficult. Um, so it's also hard to know where to do it because there's no central place to give it to. Um, we ha we tried to make a central place, and we, we when we made the the get to core team, uh, and so it kind of is a central place. But the problem it has is that it's not uh, officially supported by the community, so it doesn't get the kind of in the front in your face thing that something on Drupal.org would get. Um, it's also it's kind of successful and kind of not. So when we started the team, um, because we kind of got hired at the same time and we were getting our own money from GitTip, when we got hired, we redirected it into the team. So automatically it had some money going in and, uh, and we talked about it and other people were giving money and we were getting like $350 a week. Like right from the beginning, we built up this big balance because you can only take out like $1 at first and then you double every time. Uh, and so we burned through that, and now we're just paying out what we get in, which is more than $1,000 a month, which is, like, amazing. Uh, but it's not enough money to make a big difference in those people's lives that they could still, like, stop working and totally devote, you know, like, 10 hours a week or 30 hours a week. I mean, we're giving them $32 a week. Depending upon where you live, that could be an hour of work or three or a half an hour, right? It's not, in order to know whether or not the get tip thing would be successful, I think we would need like $5,000 a week. And we, we're only getting 350 only. And we're not fundraisers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it just sits there on the internet and we're like, I wonder if money will come in. <laughs> Because we suck at fundraising. That's not what we do. Like, if we were fundraisers, we would go get a job doing fundraising. But we're not, right? We work on core. That's our job. So the, that's a problem with GitTip. Also, an another problem with GitTip is that it's, it's, it's just a team, and the team can withdraw money. It's not actually solving the, the problem of, like, a sustainable Drupal. Like, anyone that, that we have, like, general rules around how can someone be, uh, claim from GitTip. But it doesn't allow for, like... The, the assessment of prior priorities and the focusing on, on the jobs that people aren't doing, that they don't like to do. Because I think that's one of the key things that we need to, to resource is, is, yeah. is, is the bits that block us from, from progress. And that's not always like patch contribution. In fact, it, it rarely is. But there's another, there's another thing about, about uh, funding people oh, I that. that Kathy wants to mention. I do want to mention that. I forgot yeah. about that. Um, Right, so, because one of the ways that things get funded right now is um, people have other jobs, which they get paid for, and then they have free time, which, which they work on core. And the problem with that is it means the m many people who work on core have jobs and free time. And that doesn't align with having a very diverse community and people working on the problem. It's not, uh, it's not racially diverse, gender diverse, and certainly not socioeconomical, right? Like, there's all kinds of reasons behind that, and um, Ash Dryden has written a, a really good, like, um, research reference blog post on uh, what it does when the only people, not the only, but when many people who work on a project can because they can you lose a bunch of diversity that you could get. Okay, so uh, solutions. So what we need is we need um, 
official recognition of all types of contribution. Because right now, um, we count core commit credits, and the way that we give core commit credits is almost always if you have changed a patch in some way. And we don't count uh, reviews, we don't count issue triage, we don't count uh, summary updates or testing or all, there's all different kinds of contribution. We don't count them. Um, so we need uh, Drupal.org recognition for the people that do those and also the agencies and the end users that sponsor those things. So sponsoring changing a patch, right, is not enough. We need to also do the other things in order to get this kind of velocity and sustainable development that we want. Um, that's recognition. Separate than that, we need a central independent organization um, whose goal is to ensure the future success of the Drupal project. Um, and who can fund the work that is decided to be important, so that it's a, a, an official initiative or a, a directive that Dries decides. Um, so they would be a central organization, so people know where to put the money, but they're able to direct, but they don't decide what code needs to get done. Some other entity decides, Dries decides, the project lead. Um, we need to be careful that um, when we ask people to support the project that we might be asking somebody who's already giving a ton of resources, whatever they are, to the project. So maybe what we're asking is um, in terms of giving and fun like putting the money into the funding thing is that people maybe reallocate their funding. So they look at what they're currently spending and say, you know what, maybe instead of doing that, maybe we should give to this central location that is going to have these people that are going to be working on the things that are really important to get done right now. Another important point about having a, a central body that does this is that it's, it should be trusted mm -hmm. by, by everyone, by individuals, by all the agencies and by the end users. It shouldn't be in competition or, or um, or vying for business, or vying for like attention, or or even directing, or it's it's about it's 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 about the fact that we need to have a place for people to say, hey, that's where if I want to fund Drupal Core, if I want if I want to care about where Drupal is in the next few years, if I want to make it sustainable, here's my place to put some money, rather than um, at the moment they, there's nowhere for people to go, there there really is nowhere. Um, and there's and there's lots of little efforts like you know, Kathy's my experiments with Git Tip, the, the Git Tip team, and like you know, tweeting out and, and, and amazing things have happened th through through all the different avenues. But there's <coughs> but but we, we do it once and then we don't create a repeatable pathway. Right, and the, the the central agency, right, then can afford to hire people who are really good at fundraising. Okay, so let's see if this works. Nope. Okay, so um, we thought about the people who might attend this talk and and we have kind of this, uh, the recognition is just really important and the central agency that's trusted and that has skilled staff to do fundraising, right? Like that's really important. Um, but we thought like people who come here, like what kind of things can you do? So some of the things that we talked about were maybe you came here because you're hoping to get paid to work on core, right? So we would say one of the things that you can do is have your contributions be visible so that people know that you're doing this great thing. Uh, decide what it is that you want, what kind of job you want, what you want to get paid to do, and then ask everybody to pay you to do it. Um, for people who are, have come here because you've already been thinking about the core funding problem you know, for a while and you find it of interest, uh, maybe one of the things that you could do would be to, to continue the discussion, like here, like let's talk about it, to talk to us later, to blog about it, to find somebody else's blog and make a comment on it, to lobby with your knowledge and historical uh, perspective on the problem 
to lobby to make it happen. So talk to the DA and tell them how important it is that we have this central, trusted place for people to put money. Um, for people who are already, uh, for other kinds of people who are here who might already be like totally funding, like you're maxed out, like you have your business and you've got your plan and you're already like sponsoring events and you're paying people and you're hosting sprints, like you already feel like you're exhausted, you can't get any more money, uh, give any more money away, would be to think about how you're doing it and consider if you had this central spot, would that be, would that cause more progress in releasing Drupal things and working on Drupal core? Maybe it would be more efficient. Um, and if so, please talk to the DA and tell them you would like to give them money, but you would like to give them money to fund core development. So just as an aside, like this isn't an entirely impossible impossible thing. Like I know the Bitcoin Foundation basically prints money, but they pay their core committer, for example. It's, it, other communities are, are, are working out ways of, of, of funding themselves. So we should be looking to do something similar. So you can disagree with us or no, have your own independent thoughts. No, no, I've so say who you are. So uh, My name is Eric Stielstra, Suter's son. Um, and I'm missing one um, important subject in the discussion up till now is that why would parties start to pay money directly to people or in funds or whatever? What is, what's, in them, what's in it for them? And to start answering the question, uh, I, I am in a position where I'm considering to uh, raise funds to be paid to work on core or whichever Drupal code or other activities. Um, so I have the same question, and I did walk around uh, at, uh, at, uh, at, at the booth um, to, with a few parties I know, and I've been asking them that question. And the most important answer there is exposure. And in their answer, the proposal by Dries uh, in his keynote resonates uh, 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 to be exposed that how they contribute to the community. Um, that's one that's the most important argument I've heard. Exposure for the company as contributor to the community. Yeah, Dries has written this really great blog post about um, what he does with the Octo team and how um, he has them write blog posts and do webcasts and they have analytics on that and they can track the effect that that has for them in terms of marketing returns. Um, so that's definitely something, and I know like when I've done it, it's um, especially for Compress, um, it was really important to them that I blog in English uh, because they didn't have anybody to blog in English and they really wanted to be on Drupal Planet. Um, and so that was like one of the things that we talked about that was very beneficial for them. Um, I think um, some companies, like I think Black Mesh, I mean, you, you can say for yourself, but I, th I think one of the things is that they get like 60% of their business from Drupal, right? So if, if Drupal continues to exist and, and grows and adoption grows and Drupal 8 comes out, like that's gonna be good business for them, right? So making that happen is good. Uh, also there's like, I think sometimes when p humans hear a message over and over and over again, they begin to believe it. And so when we say, and when Dries says, it's important for businesses to hire people to work on core, and he says it over and over again, I think businesses are like, maybe it's important that we do this. And then they do it, right? Like it's not enough to say these things once. So I think like, anyway, for years, right, we've been saying like sustainable and we need these resources, and I think people are starting to listen. Um, I think also companies do the same thing that individuals do in scratching their own itch. So if you have a business model which requires a certain feature to be in core, it 
makes sense that you would hire somebody to help make that happen. And we have like checks and balances in our review processes and our consensus building that makes sure that when those things get in, they don't hurt other things, like it's not giving an advantage. But there's nothing wrong with funding something that gives you an advantage that also gives other people an advantage. Like it's called making it better. So, so I think companies will do it for that reason too. I don't know if, if you have any other things to add or if somebody like actually wants to be like, we fund people, here's why. Uh, what, can you say it in the microphone please? Hi, I'm uh, Steve Curry from uh, Code Enigma and, uh, oh yeah, is that better? Yeah, yes, I'm, yeah I'm Steve from Code, Code Enigma uh, and we, uh, we uh, let all our team work on Drupal one day a month, so that amounts to about 14, 14 person days a month. And we do it for the pragmatic reasons, is why we would do it as a company, well, it's because we get better staff, because the staff want to do it. So we attract better people. Uh, why we would kind of do it in the context of Drupal is we're getting seriously concerned as a company about Drupal 8, because this is so slow that it becomes a real business risk. People are thinking, can we rely on this as a platform if they take that long to release it? The, the thing that's wrong with our model uh, is that uh, just giving a small amount of time isn't enough. Yes, Pe a small, a small enough amount done. of time to many people. Doesn't get stuff done. I used to think that was a good idea, and I don't think that's a good idea anymore. Yeah. Because you just you you go ahead explain why please. Well, it's not about it. It's not good because people's time gets eaten into, so it comes under pressure. Nobody can code one day a month and then go away for a month. It just never works. Uh, we couldn't stop people doing it because we'd be taking, you know, what effectively is a right of employment for them away, and they wouldn't they wouldn't be happy about that. But I completely see the need to have focused resources doing stuff. One thing that I thought, though, that, I don't know, was slightly missing in the slides is mm. some sense of the size of the problem. Because if I was project managing it, I want to know how many people are needed to get this sodding thing launched on a reasonable time scale, not just when Dries thinks it's ready. That, that's not yeah. how I'd manage a client project. So why would I be manage our software project that way? Right. So when we talk about recognizing many kinds of contribution, one thing we don't recognize and value is project management. Yeah. Um, it's all about the code. So clearly we have a need for that. Um, I think um, something that the one day a week does still buy you, even though it may be not the most effective use, like as in terms of a company, like one day a week, one day a month for 20 people is 20 days a month. Right? So you could spend it out like that, or it could be 20 days a month to one person. Right, But what you do get when you do the uh, one day a month for many people is you get many people who actually get better at their job. Because you have 20 people who are doing something on Drupal.org, and they are getting reviewed by other people who are helping them become better developers. So it's not only attracting better developers, because they're the ones who want jobs that have that uh, perk, but you're also getting like free training, like you're paying them to work, but you're not paying the person who's training them. So you're paying one half of that. So you still get that. It's just, I think in terms of velocity of project, in terms of getting Drupal released, right, then now you're talking, well, maybe that's not a benefit of that. But it's not without benefit. It's just maybe doesn't benefit the velocity of the project. It's still good for the project, it's still good. So. The other problem with um, with <laughs> with one like with four hours a week or something like that is I think it can be frustrating for the people who are doing that. Their company might expect them to. Um, they they have to spend a couple hours like figuring out which issues of theirs are already closed, what status they're in. They come back to it. They finally figure out what needs to be done. They have like an hour left to do it. They run into some kind of trouble. They're almost ready to do it. And now the day is over and they don't even post anything, right? And not posting things is just not good. Uh, so I don't know, maybe they expect it, but maybe they would kind of be okay with not doing it. So you could ask them, 
Like, is anybody, like, would they rather do this or something else? Maybe they'd voluntarily give it up, and then somebody else could have two days a month if somebody else didn't take their day a month. Um, when we give people just a little bit of time to do something, and we know they're going to be frustrated by this, it's almost effective because we're pressuring them to do it on their own time. So there are people who are very happy with one day a month because they're also doing one day a week. But it only works for them because they're doing it on their own time in addition. So, Larry. Hi. So two notes. Um, first, I said at the beginning of the Whiskey initi Initiative coming up on is it three and a half years ago now, um, give me five people 10 hours a week, I can do anything. Give me 50 people one hour a week, I can do diddly squat. The last three and a half years have proven that they've been completely true. The most uh, movement we get is when we have a small number of people who have a huge chunk of time. Lots of people crowdsourcing things works for a very small number of issues, and even then it's still a small number of people doing most of the work. That's just the reality. Right. Uh, so do, you, do you have any sense for how those small number of people are affording to do this time? Like, do you know them personally? <laughs> Are they doing it for work, or what makes them available I, to do that? It varies. It's been different people at different times. Um, right now, to be honest, the core whiskey team is me and Daniel Werner, and Daniel's part of every team because Daniel's crazy, and he's getting 50% time from his employer. So he's getting a big chunk of time, and he's doing his own time as well, as right. I understand it. Um, so that's the, at, this, at this point, that is the core whiskey team is just the two of us. How long does somebody have to be involved 50% of their time with an initiative like Whiskey in order for you to find it effective? Because certainly, like, a week isn't long enough. No. Um, right? Do you need them for four weeks? How long do you need them? I have to think about that to give you a, a number I'm confident on. My knee-jerk thought is give me a month of time at a time. Sure. You know, but I'd have to actually look at that. But yes, it's how long does it take to get a non-trivial sized issue through? Could be anywhere from a week to six months. So the person working on it, they need them for either a week to six months. And I wish I could predict that in mm -hmm. advance, which it's going to be. That would make my life a lot easier. Yeah. The other point I wanted to note, just for those that are concerned about you know, company influence, um, some stats on the Linux kernel. Ah, uh, thank you. Uh, from the Linux Foundation posted last year, so reasonably recent. Um, the, the Linux kernel has, the kernel 3.10 had 1,392 contributors. Footnote, that means we're nearly twice as many people. Um, however, of them, 13% are listed as no company, 10% are Red Hat, 9% uh, are Intel, about 4% are Texas Instruments, and it's just all corporate after that. 13% is not from a company that's funding it. Does that mean kernel. those people work for no company, or does that mean they have no company funding their work? Because I'm not that's sure. different, right? Like, because mm -hmm. the the 10% of people could work for Red Hat, but are those 10% getting their work funded by Red Hat? Because that's, that's what yeah. I mean. That's the, the, the that difference between somebody who has a full-time job mm -hmm. for Red Hat and then in their free time contributes to the Linux project. That's different than their job at Red Hat being contribute to the Linux project. So and, the, I don't, and I don't know. The so. article I'm looking at here says uh, the Linux Foundation lists the top companies that contribute to the Linux kernel. So they're implying it's paid time. They're implying it. I do know that Red Hat has – Red Hat and IBM and SUSE have numerous people on staff – whose day job is go work on the Linux kernel, including several of the, ma the major maintainers, uh, aside from Linus himself. Cool. Thank um, you. And the, one of the keys for every very large open source project is they all have a lot of different companies backing it. Um, there's an article I'm referencing later in, in my talk that Sam can probably talk about too, is he's in line behind me. There he is. Um, of the really large open source projects, of which Drupal is one, all of them are, have a pluralistic um, backing from a number of different companies with a nonprofit in the middle. 
So there's different companies funding different people all together. It's not one company. Okay. One company funding a project doesn't scale. Thank you. Okay, so um, I have worked on call for a long time, but there's only been a handful, a couple of occasions where people have said, can we give you money to work on a core, some core patches? But on the other hand, I've been quite fortunate that my day jobs have involved projects that have resulted in working on core patches as a side effect. So for example, when Drupal 7 was in alpha, I switched job to examiner.com who were building on the Drupal 7 alpha. And for the first month or something, I think I worked exclusively on Drupal 7 performance issues, like whatever I thought was a problem. And then after that was like all different things. And some of it was like a client work, and but lots of it were core patches because there were lots of bugs. Yeah. And they needed fixing for that site to get launched. And it launched before Drupal 7 did as well. So they were like an early adopter that they were an early adopter who were willing to fund fixing things. Yeah, they were they were they want they didn't want to build on Drupal six, they wanted to build on Drupal seven because they wanted things that were in it, because they needed to serve a lot of traffic. Um, and they didn't want to be worrying about upgrade paths for years and years and years. And at the same time Drupal Gardens were doing the same thing. And before this was before Octo, but a lot of core contributions came from some of the people now work for Octo who originally were working on Drupal Gardens before Drupal seven came out. And, and sometimes we find the same issues and work on the same things. And that if you're, if you're a company that is thinking about how can you get Drupal 8 out faster, one thing you can do if, you're, if, you're conf if, you, if you have a project with long time scales is start thinking about how feasible it is to build it with Drupal 8. You can't, you can't launch a site now, but if you build the sites the right way, you can start early development on the site and within a month or within two or three, four months, depends when, how confident you are and what happens. And then you should be able to keep it going. But you need to be confident that you can do that, but it is an option for people. Yeah. And, and it's not saying fix these, all these core things, it's saying use it really early. And it's, you're gonna have overhead because of that. But that overhead that you have, that extra cost of dealing with all the bugs, is one, gonna get out faster, and two, you, you don't have to deal with Drupal 7 issues that you've been dealing with for three or four years. Um, so it's, it's just another way that people can do that. Thank you. I'm Nathaniel Catchpole, I'm Catch Drupal 8. Uh, yeah. uh, my name is Daniel Vena. Um, so there are several points. So first, um, about like whiskey and the focus there. I think the problem is that we work in asynchronous ways. Wait, you work in what ways? We, will, we, we work asynchronous. Asynchronous. Not, not synchronous. Not yeah, synchronous. Asynchronous. Uh, asynchronous. Yeah, asynchronous. Sorry. Um, so, so basically, someone in the in the US wrote a comment. Someone in U in in Europe um, writes another comment. Then it's like a day or two between. Um, the only thing I think we can solve that is by getting people together to work on certain features. The same is with if you want to have fixed certain features then you should pay people to work on that certain features. But at the same time, you need to scale horizontally to like getting the review problem done at the same time because there's a huge review problem. Yeah. There's like thousands, literally thousands of issues which don't get reviewed, they need to be reworked, and then they are basically dead. This is like the worst experience for the new contributors. They post, post a patch at a Drupalcon, then it doesn't get reviewed, and then they are gone, basically. Yeah. So we need both people which work on dedicated things like dedicated features or just getting the uh, um, release out but also have like people which basically just to reviews for example because right. that's why like, like a long-term investment in the future because most of as we know if if there's someone motivated then they will continue to uh, continue right so that's going along with like recognizing things that were not like reviews Right? Uh, and yeah. also well, funding also people paid, to do yeah. it. Exactly. And coordinating and working in a team and getting multiple people to focus on something that's really important to get done right now. Yeah, those are really good points. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Josef Tasio. Um, so I've been working on the DA Rules Initiative, uh, mm. which was kind of Are a you here success. to correct Alex when he said how successful it was? Um, and you're going to be like, well. Yeah, we can. 
put that into perspective. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so an in investment of like 300 hours at least uh, to coordinate the project. You did. You did so, 300 hours yeah, of and marketing and coordination. And we have raised 18,000 euros so far. Um, half of that is the crowdfunding and half of that is uh, corporate funding. Um, and to complete rules, we need 1,000 hours of work. So we kind of right now raised a third of the amount of money that we need by spending a third of the amount of time that we need. It's um, not very successful, actually. Yes. Um, but um, it's a good experience. I mean, um, we're all learning, and um, I, I really appreciated the whole like stuff uh, doing it. So. Um, I would really love to see an organization support me in doing that because I think we're good at explaining what we want to do. Um, we just need to get better on fundraising. Do you, so you did have quite good promotional materials, I thought. Do you feel like you didn't have the promotion channels? Like if you had been promoted directly by the DA or directly on Drupal.org, do you feel like you kind of had it going on? You had the right team. Mm -hmm. You had trusted people. You had endorsements by people who were experts that people could believe in when they said, if you give money to these people, like, they're going to do a good job. So you had all these things. And you had great promotional materials. I got my ruler the other day. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> right? So what did you feel was missing? Was it, that, was it, the in, was it being on Drupal.org? Like? OK. Well, there's two, th two things. Drupal 8 is far away, and people do not care. Right. Um, and then there's the communication channel. So we basically, the crowdfunding is mainly by friends. So we kind of end up shuffling money around in circles uh, while we cannot target the big tail or the big, I, I would say like, I would like to target the big tail of site builders or, or um, like 200,000 installations is quite a big number. So there must be money somewhere. Um, and also the big companies. So these I would like to be able to target, but there's no way to target them. Uh, I can see in WordPress, they put advertisements on the modules. This is mainly maybe something that we do not like to have. Um, yeah. So, and to finish this up, uh, I feel like we should focus on, when we have this kind of conversations, we should try to start quicker uh, and try to find solutions somewhere, or at, at least explain where we can find those solutions, because so today, we, we had a lot of introduction of why we need this. Hmm. And I'm very much, yes, we need this. So I feel like we have too, too little time to come up with the conclusion. Or we need, we need to be better at the process of defining uh, what is the conclusion of this conversation. OK. Thank you. Thanks. Right. Uh, this is Dries. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have, I have some, more, uh, some more thoughts. I think, I think a good starting point maybe for us is also to define what success looks like here because in my mind getting $500 a week in git tip is not even close to, to success um, you know if, if you think about all the work that we have I would argue we need you know dozens and dozens of full-time you know core contributors we're not talking about getting to one or two or three we, we already have you know, six or seven full time, but we need to not just double. We need not just triple. Like we need to grow that number by at least tenfold, in my mind. You know, to reach even a minimum viable definition of success. So, if you are thinking these numbers, we're now talking about, you know, raising a hundred million dollars, or maybe not a hundred million, but like let's say twenty million dollars a year or something. There's no way in hell that we're going to be able to raise that amount of money through a centralized organization. Um, and we've tried. Actually, Michael Myers here is one of the things we're trying and have been trying for three or four years is something called large-scale Drupal, where we've raised money from, I think we have over 50 members or something uh, today. And we're, we're not even close to these numbers. I mean, we can even afford to hire one full-time developer um, despite all the effort. So, the idea of a centralized body that raises money is is awesome, but it's also not really realistic in my mind in terms of what is achievable. Uh, we may be able to get to a couple full-time developers in the next year um, through 
and I know LSD is not necessarily independent and all of these things, but um, you know, we try to sell these things to in, uh, organizations, and they all want something in return. Um, Do you think you're hampered by the fact that it's incorporated, incorporated into Acquia? Would it help to be independent um, from Acquia? That's yeah, it's, it actually makes it easier for them. Uh, because a lot of the organizations, one, they cannot just donate money. It's not easy for them. It's actually easier if they have an existing relationship with a, an organization. It's just from a legal and uh, procurement point of view, it's just the, the easiest thing to do. They have master agreements in place, and it's very easy once there is such an agreement to mm. wire money. Um, so there's, I mean, these are tactical advantages. Is there other key reasons you would say? Right. So just to give you an idea, we have probably close to 200 salespeople at this point, and they're all trying to sell LSD. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and it's like, <laughs> I mean, oh, they're, they're all trying to sell large-scale Drupal. <laughs> they're all trying to sell large-scale Drupal, and, and what we pitch them is this vision, like you can put money in a pool, and we're going to hire people, and we're going to tackle some problems that you guys share. I mean, this is exactly what we would try to do. And it's like most people say, no, not interested in that. So anyway, I don't want to burst a bubble here. I mean, it's worth trying for others. I mean, I wouldn't be against that. But it's very hard for, you know, to, to do it. It requires salespeople, legal work. Um, and, and so I don't want to jeopardize the mic here. But um, I think Linux and Dell and IBM are great examples from, from the Linux community, um, and they're each investing, each of these organizations are investing like probably $10 million in kernel development a year. So they have large numbers of, of people actually, not just one or two. Um, and so that actually got me thinking like who are these organizations in Drupal? You know, who is the IBM, who is the Dell in the Drupal community that's willing to say I'm going to hire 10 people and have them contribute to Drupal core or just Drupal and they don't exist. They don't exist um, except maybe for an Acquia, but that, that's the only example that I can think of uh, today. Um, and so that's actually how we came up with this notion of large-scale Drupal. It's like, you know, maybe it's not one or two or three large companies, but maybe there is hundreds of companies um, that are willing to, to give $100,000, $50,000 instead of $10 million each. And the reality right now is they're not willing to. Uh, in my mind, uh, this you know and that doesn't mean large scale Drupal won't succeed. It is growing, but it's it's very slow, and it's not a solution that will happen fast. Uh, I think. It's eight thousand dollars. That's a. There's, there's, there's multiple tiers, but I think the lowest tier is 8,000, um, which in our case, is, it's called an associate membership. And it's not even a donation. They actually get some things in return. Like we organize meetups and like, you know, we give them uh, networking benefits and knowledge as well. Like we will you know, share white papers with them so they can actually get value because otherwise it's very hard actually to get approval to, to do these things internally. So we have to kind of wrap it up as almost as something that they can buy, right. something educational, uh, so they can actually get it past their legal and finance teams. Um, so I, I, I personally think that there's a, a lot of things we can do, and I, you know, I've outlined them in my keynote. I think um, you know, we know what companies want in return for contributing to Drupal. You just have to be comfortable with, with this credit system and, and advertising on D2O, in my mind. Um, Anyway, and that's not to say GitHub and the likes aren't great. I think we should also integrate them better in Dito, but I don't think uh, it's going to really solve the problem, personally. I, I agree. I think that, that we need a variety of solutions, and it's them all together. But um, that, that the, the one issue that we're facing is that, is that we, we don't have... Every, not everyone has access to LSD. There's, there's, there's many other end users out there, and we have a load of agencies, and we have no differentiation between the agencies. You don't, if, you're, if you're a big multinational and you're choosing between five or six agencies to deliver sites to you, you don't know which ones to choose based upon 
how good they are for the sustainability of the product you're using. And so, like, I've spoken to some of the, to one of the clients of LSD, and they're like, well, it, it, LSD kind of fits what we want to do, but what we'd really like to do is we'd really like to know that the, the agencies that we're using to build our products are actually looking after our investment in them by looking after Drupal. And so, yeah, I, I agree that we need to make that much more transparent on, on, on the other It's key. Um, all right. Hi, I'm Ryan Wheel. I run a small shop in Montreal. Um, I contribute in many ways by showing up to events, and I've been uh, grateful to receive some benefit from some organizations to attend events in the past. So that's been really good. Um, I have to say that the keynote was really welcome to hear a lot of that uh, discussion and thought that went into possible solutions. Um, so just a little background of like how I operate as a small agency with the people I work with. We sort of look at this type of stuff as career development, and it's really difficult to do because you know, when you return home and you do have client work, it's, you kind of get pulled offline very easily. And there's like issues I know that I'm tagged on that I have just kind of abandoned because they've grown stale and like I've been busy with other things and other people have taken it on and the project's moved beyond that. So these are issues that we face as <laughs> small companies that try to contribute. Um, so I just wanted to add a few points of like possible solutions that maybe haven't been discussed. Some of them I've discussed in private with a few of you and uh, uh, one of those, I guess, requires some background, which is, and it kind of goes back to Larry's point, um, the Linux Foundation actually has part of their mandate to fund Linus and some of the other core developers as well. They have actually, um, since the OpenSSL bugs were revealed, they have since made an initiative that's been announced publicly to um, fund developers for core infrastructure. And I think that's something that should be considered in this context, that like, if we really want to push stuff forward, we shouldn't be just looking to a company, but like, we should be saying like, who's actually able to collect money now and redistribute that money. Um, so like, for example, like we have the DA tasked with like, doing infrastructure for Drupal.org and marketing, but we don't do things like, well, you know, there's serious gaps in this component of the system, like, um, and the, one of the solutions I've proposed in the past in discussions is um, like could we have something like akin to like a scholarship where somebody could apply to say work for six months or a year or two years on like a fixed term so that they don't need to be hunting down contracts during that time. They know that their money is secure for a while and they can focus their work and report into an entity that is able to distribute some of that money, an entity that people who like myself as a small business owner know that I can give them money um, under $8,000 <laughs> um, and I can know that that's going to go to a particular uh, initiative or perhaps a particular person, although I don't know if I would want to go that far. I think I would rather say like I know that I would like to see improvement in the multilingual system, for example, so I would like to say here's a donation that should go toward multilingual. Um, do with it what you will. Like, I don't have time to manage this stuff myself, and I can't keep up with every issue, but other people are looking at that, so maybe they can, like, look at it from that perspective. I know it's not currently part of the DA's mandate, but I know they're an organization that we all know and trust, and that people do give their money to now. I just question if maybe if we could spend some of the marketing money elsewhere or, like, make it so that, you know, people can know that there is a development fund somewhere that they can trust. Yeah. My name is Jibran, uh, and I'm from Pakistan. Uh, I work for uh, Previous Next uh, as a remote developer. Uh, my core time is not uh, sponsored by them, and I only work for them for paid work. So my point here, uh, uh, my point of view here is that we don't have a lot of big Drupal shops with, you know, 1,000 or, you know, 10, uh, 100, uh, 150, uh, 100, 1,000, like it, that much manpower. We don't have any uh, company which which have 1,000 employees, yeah, 1,500 employees, okay? So uh, 
in his Prague uh, keynote, he mentioned that we want IBM or Dell like companies for Pakistan or for Drupal. So we, we for that we need a giants like that in our community, <coughs> in our shops. Uh, we need that kind of shops, but I can't see them around uh, other than Acquia. So yes, he's right. Acquia has a sales team and big sales team. I. Uh, that's why we uh, everywhere in the community saw Akvi, 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 Akvi. We have that everywhere. But the main reason for that, this is that everyone, you or Alex, we all are working for small Drupal shops. Uh, I think for 150 or more than, not more than 500 people. So that's the main problem. We have yeah. to uh, make masses embrace the Drupal as a product. So, like, do you have any, like, imagine, like, what that looks like in your head? Does it look like, um, how many, how many people does Capgemini have? Um, what, working like, on Drupal or working worldwide? Just worldwide. I think it's like 120,000 people. Yeah, so, I don't know how we count things well, like that. Uh, like, does it mean, like, converting a company that has an existing business and, like, already, like, 150,000 employees to start doing Drupal? Like, I don't know what... I, I, mean, I, I think what happened in Linux with IBM and Dell and others is they had their own operating systems, and they said, oh, instead of building our own, we're going to switch to Linux. And so um, what, what I mean by that is they were not selling services like they basically made a very strategic decision. They like threw out like a multi-billion dollar business line and replaced it with Linux. And so the question is not, can we convert Capgemini or other large services businesses, I think personally, but like, is there a large organization that would adopt something like Drupal and put it at the core of their business um, to fundamentally change how they work and what they do? Right. So, all right. So Adobe ditched the CQ5 division and <laughs> Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Joseph, and uh, I started Drupal Fund uh, about <laughs> two years ago. And uh, just wanted to give you a few ideas of why actually I was thinking about Drupal Fund and why uh, we created it. Uh, when we talk about uh, funding Korak, and I agree with Dries that we need millions of dollars every year. and. Um, I also agree that we need to have several ways of, um, or several sources from which we raise the money, like LSD and uh, everything else. But I think that one big opportunity is within the community. Uh, one thing which got me passionate and about thinking even about Drupal Fund and then creating was that when we look at the numbers which are on Drupal.org website, there are like 1,115,000 people registered on the website. 3% of them are actually developers who have at least one commit. And uh, when we talk about 1% of that, of the whole pool of people registered, it's 10,000 people. And if they would dedicate or donate maybe 1% of their salary mm. to Drupal, it would be around three to five million US dollars every year. And there is enough money to hire, I don't know, 70 full-time Drupal developers. So maybe one way to think about it is to try to kind of ignite the change in the, or shift in thinking of people within the community from only taking Drupal and using it for my own profit, for my company profit, for my customer profit, to actually contribute financially and, you know, to raise funds and give back something which I, uh, which we received. So. Yeah. So in order to convince those people to do that, you have to have access to talk to them. Yeah, and maybe there are some marketing campaigns which we can do within our community itself to, to maybe you can learn a lot from organizations which are successful on um, websites like Kickstarter, you know, who are doing crowdfunding and uh, not only crowdfunding, but any, maybe if we have somebody who is working on marketing part of fundraising, it would be easier, I don't know. Hmm. 
Thank you. I'm apparently not very tall. Are we are we already 15 minutes over? Okay. So, uh, Michael Myers, I'll, I'll try and be really quick. Uh, first of all, this is an awesome conversation. Um, this is a very complex topic, and I feel like we are trying to pin uh, broad solutions to it. And I would encourage everybody to try and we are trying to pin what like very like it's not there is no single solution to this. Yes, um, absolutely, it, it absolutely. There's no single solution. A lot of different constituents and needs, and I, I think for me at least, it helps to kind of break it down. So different solutions may be beneficial to different problems. For example, yeah. you know, we want to raise money for core development, um, which something like LSD may be helpful for, and alone is not the answer, but. Um, you know, we want to. I loved how the way Dries contextualized sort of the innovation and the role of the, you know, uh, hobbyist or contributor on the edge of Drupal, right? Uh, we want to make sure that we're creating a community that has tremendous innovation. Um, right, and no barriers for them. Sure. At the like, same time, it's really important that as we start to think about things like funding and paying people to work on things, mm -hmm. we also think about how we're going to fund mm -hmm. making it easier for people to contribute in general, because we don't want any barriers for people who want to work on something that they want to work on. It's so, super important. Yeah, a lot of different needs and motivations here. Um, and I think we need to try and map solutions to the different needs and motivations, and there'll be a lot of different solutions for each of those problems. And I think one of the things that pains me right now is that you know I think GitTip is an important part of the solution, but I see it being applied where the people who are already giving tremendous amounts of the project through their volunteer time like, um, are also the ones that we're then looking for to contribute to that Git tip, right? So we need to expand. Yeah, there's too much recycling of money. Yeah. And Way I, too much. It's not, it's not good. We don't have a marketing department. We're not tapping people who aren't already giving. Yeah. It's, not, it's not successful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's not that it couldn't be. Yeah. It just isn't. Sure. At the same time, I would also caution comparisons or direct comparisons to things like Linux. Um, Linux is a very different product than Drupal, right? People build, pro people build major product lines and drive billions of dollars in revenue on top of Linux. Uh, Drupal is something that people see more as a cost center, and there are a few companies like Acquia that are building products and services on top of it. So it's a very different piece of software solving a very different problem, and it's in a very different point in its life cycle. Right? If you look at the early days of Linux, they received tremendous amounts of injections of capital from a single organization or a small number of organizations. And if you look at things like Mozilla, right, they first got money from AOL to get off the ground, then Google. Right? So uh, again, um, you know, we're in a very different position in our life cycle and we're a very different type and piece of software. And we can't just uh, look at these uh, projects and say, you know, they did this, this is going to work for us because even if it will, we may not be in the same point in our life cycle. Um, I'd love to see more conversation and ideas about this. I think one of the challenges that I have is that there isn't a tremendous amount of data available, right? I can't, yeah, we have know. no idea how, how, many, how much of the contributions that we're getting mm -hmm. are, are funded. Sure. There's no way to tell. And I can't so even we, we can't Acquia say, you know, this is what the company is contributing. We have so many passionate individuals that on top of a very challenging work schedule find the time with their families and lives to contribute above that. And I can't even uh, measure it within our own company sometimes, you know, who's paying for what and one comes out of volunteer time. And I think in order us, for us to arrive at better solutions to these problems, I think we need to do a lot of research and understanding. Um, we need to look at a lot of other open source projects and learn what's worked for them at different points in their life cycle. And I think that we need to position ourselves, as Dries suggested in his keynote, to be able to evaluate our own position better. And, and until that, we're kind of, you know, somewhat blindly, you know, trying things to see what works. Yeah, I like blindly trying things. I'm, I'm not against. <laughs> <laughs> I like the let's let's give it a go like and let's iterate. Like that was one of the messages that came out of that that I really like. Yeah. Like let's not be afraid, I, right? I like agree let's with that. just go. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? I, I wholeheartedly agree with that, and that's our only option in the short term. Yeah. But I'd like to see us be more data driven in our execution because I be meant let's just try ways of getting data. Yeah. Let's cool. not worry about getting the data perfectly. 
let's just start trying to get data. Um, so yeah, so that's definitely something. I really think like, especially somebody else asked like, they weren't really clear on what we were suggesting, right? And so one of the things we did was we tried to make an overview of some things that are going on right now. And I think the whole that we see yep. is the independent central organization that is going through Drupal.org and the DA that has skilled marketing people that are funded through the revenue that they bring in through that, right? So the, the, the fundraising people, right, like they need to bring in enough money to pay themselves and to pay other things, right? And I think we don't have that right now. That's missing from our ecosystem of fundraising things because I don't count LSD as meeting that criteria. Yes. I think we should have LSD. Sure. Like, don't get me wrong. Because exactly LSD work, has, like, <laughs> but you're not independent but of Aquia. But we Aquian. couldn't survive independent. You know, uh, it's, I operate uh, completely independent from Aquia in the sense that I'm a member and partner driven program. But you're not perceived as being independent correct. of Correct. That's Aquia. a marketing problem that we're trying to correct. But Aquia does not direct what large scale Drupal does. My members and partners direct what, what we do, where we invest the money that it's they give It's hard me. because it's hard to distinguish Aquia from Dries. So Aquia doesn't direct. Well, oh, now you're talking about something else. I'm telling you that. So wait, so large LSD, scale Drupal. So anyway, we should talk about this sure. more, right? But yeah. my understanding is that LSD does many great things, mm -hmm. right? Like we've been, like I've gotten to know you a lot better since you've gotten involved with bringing in way more people to the sprints, the extended sprints, and getting companies that would never send their employees, never pay for them to come, right? Never send them here. Like you've been successful at getting them here, and that's really great. Mm -hmm. But I. I guess I didn't know whether or not LSD brought in the money that paid for Octo. I wish we were bringing in money to pay for Octo. So Aquia, you're not. So no. that's, I mean, Aquia it's, pays okay. For Octo? So that's what I mean. I think we need an LSD-like thing mm -hmm. that is not attached to Aquia, that is separate from that. I'm telling you that, where that the, that's not, that's impossible to be it successful. It just, w it won't bring in enough money? Sure. I mean, look, I've, I've talked to, say, like, the lawyers behind the Linux Foundation, and they said, hey, you're never going to be successful unless you're independent if you want to raise the kind of money that you want to raise. And then I go to my members and my partners, and I say, hey, you know, if I were to make this independent of Acquia, would you be able to contribute more money? That's not their problem. In fact, right. The that's only why reason they're going to you. It's the other people that aren't going to you that would go to an independent organization. I'm not saying that we don't need an independent organization, and that good, we, we need, agree. And that okay. we don't need multiple <laughs> solutions to this problem. But you're never going to raise the kind of money you want from enterprises through the Drupal Association, because my, the, these organizations, they're in fact, they're telling me that they want to give me more money so that I can funnel some of that to the Drupal Association because they themselves can't give money to the Drupal Association. See, now that's so. the kind of things that I think we should really talk about. Yeah. Like I think, like you have got this really great perspective and access to these people, but I think we also don't want to lose sight that you don't have access to some people who won't even talk to you. Correct. I, so I, we need to find out like what they need and we need to find like all the knowledge that you have and figure out like what we can do. I am focused on a piece of the puzzle. A good uh, one. And representing a specific constituency in the community, and Drupal serves many constituencies, and we need different solutions to have a thriving ecosystem. See, I knew the, we totally agree. The agreed. last thing I want to say, Alex, you brought up uh, partners. So LSD just launched a partner program, uh, and just today I met with a company uh, that's going to dedicate another full-time core developer. Um, and so uh, over the next year, we're going to be bringing around a 25, 30 partner organizations. And in order to join the program, they have to make a minimum commitment of 20% time. And we're, we're trying to get 50 or more from these larger organizations. Um, we already have four that have committed a minimum of 20% time. And so. Wait, uh, the organizations that are becoming partners are committing to 20% com time committing of to their a developers? Of taking a top Drupal developer and giving them 20% of their time to work under the direction of large scale Drupal members and partners. So, so be careful how you market that. We, I don't know that we need, we have more needs that are broader than developers. Correct. There you mean contributors. Contributors, sorry. That's a, a poor way of phrasing it, <laughs> correct. Um, and in fact, we talked today about uh, project management and some of the things that you brought up. And so uh, it's not a development problem, it's a resource and funding problem. Um, so that's meaningfully underway, uh, but 
I said, this is an ecosystem, and we need a lot of different solutions. And, and we need more data we and more information. More and we need to know, like, what are your pain points and what is it that they like about what you give so that yeah. other people can, like, learn from that. That's good. Cool. All right, you guys are completely amazing. I can't believe you stayed for that. Thank you. Like, Thank you. Uh, we have, uh, you know, many dinners and sprints and things to happen, so we can keep talking about this. Thanks, you guys.